Okay, got my clearance underneath, but the next problem is the lead screw won't fit. One side or the other has got to come off so it can get the clearance all the way down in the track. This is Jeremiah. Thanks for tuning in. Merry Christmas. Cut to the time lapse. Cleaned up. There's the fragment. There's a nice X in it there too. Yeah, I was checking it with a thermometer, got up to like 220 degrees. So hopefully it's undamaged. You might be screaming at me about why didn't I take it off the lead screw or the ball screw? Is because it actually has ball bearings inside of it. And if you take it off, the ball bearings go everywhere. All right. There she is. We've got loads of clearance. Okay. Probably shouldn't be sliding that ball screw around in there, but just a one-man show here, people. Yahtzee. Okay, I've got these end mounts for the ball screw. These will actually hold the ball screw itself. These will attach these to the extruded aluminum. These are standard uh, NUMA 23 mount motor mounts for their eight, um, eight millimeter Acme lead screws. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade those so I'll have to expand these holes a bit to get the ball screw through it. And those, it's a little over a half an inch. So I'll have to uh, go ahead and enlarge that on this uh, half inch aluminum plate here. Mount this plate to the end of the um, C-beam. That's what I'm calling it, because that's what Open Builds calls it, with the threaded holes here. So there's uh, top left, bottom two in the middle, and then top right, and are threaded holes. Those match up with the threaded holes that are countersunk here. And then this block will go mounted on top of it like so, which I'll have to drill and tap the holes for those. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this up to seven eighths uh, with this graduated, I don't even know what you call it. Whatchamacallit, that's what I'm gonna call it. With the graduated whatchamacallit. bolt here, two underneath, and then one on the left side. Get those in. All right, so that end cap is on there and nice and solid. Now we'll fit this other end on and we'll move over to the other side and get that one on. A little bit of a gap. We'll get to that in a minute. All right, now for the other side. Oh man. I'm going to put it on backwards. Silly, silly. Alright. Ugly side out.
I say ugly side because I scratched it all up as I was widening out this uh, bore here. Okay. All right, all secure. All right, now we put the block on there on the end. That secures the ball screw from going backwards and forwards, uh, which is something you really want to avoid in actuators. Because if the ball screw is moving, the gantry plate is not. So yeah, that's bad. So it'll fit on there something like that. And there'll be a nut you can wind down under the end of this to secure it to this block here. So it can't go in and out. It's literally pinned to this one and rotates. So this guy is doing a lot of heavy lifting. All right, time to get the height set on this. It's not set for the size of ball screw, so we'll need to uh, get her all aligned. We'll move the gantry plate over here to do that. All right, got the gantry plate mo pretty much moved over, but I need to raise this side over here. So I got a couple spacers and a precision spacer. <laughs> That's what we're calling these things nowadays. So something like that goes up underneath this. Like so. All right, it's more or less aligned. And this end over here is not high. The gantry plate can slide over the top of it. I want the uh, ball screw to be low as possible inside this track, so that means running the nut um, pretty much as close as possible. And I got some good ample clearance under my gantry plate. So I'm going to have to employ some more precision spacers. Something like that. That'll give me, bless you. Yep, you're on camera. All right, that'll give me the little bit of elevation I need to make sure it doesn't grind, uh, but give me the maximum uh, distance away from my gantry plate. Check this out. I got it fit. And I got my spacer in there, and check out the play here. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but that ain't much. What are you chewing on, huh? What are you chewing on? You're like a loud little muncher over there. All we hear is you munching. Yeah, you. All right, let's lock her in place with a C-clamp, something like that. And then we'll throw in another one for good measure. Okay, what I'm looking for here is this not to rub. I think I got it. As well as this to be loose. And it is. So, I think we're good. Okay, great, Jeremiah. You got it clamped on there, but uh, what's your plan here to permanently attach it? And we noticed you didn't have holes behind. And you are correct, there's not. So I'm gonna need to find a way to get some holes there. And to start that process, I'm gonna show you a new tool. And that is a transfer punch. So you made up two different surfaces in the right spot. So um, making holes and putting holes in the right spot is a lot simpler with a pack of these guys. All right. So all I do, slide them down the placement where you want to put the new hole. And the little point, let's see if I can focus this here. A little point on the end will transfer to the center of that hole in the other piece of material. Come on, focus. There we go. So we'll slide it on in here. Clamps on the way a bit. There we go. 
still in the way. There it goes. All right, so it's all the way down and able to meet up with the surface in the back there. And this is cramping my style, so hold on. Okay, so what I found for using transfer punches is they're not always perfect. You want one that's closest as possible to the hole without being oversized. Obviously, oversized ones don't fit all the way in there. Uh, but if they're undersized, you won't get the exact center of the hole. You'll get it probably lower, wherever the gravity is going to pull the thing, or however it's sitting. So I found a little cheat that works for this. So steal this one if you want to. For a transfer set, if you can scribe with it, you can mark a hole centralized location with the punch. So what you do is you push it in and then you just kind of give it a spin, a little rotation on one side. And what that's going to do is draw a very small circle on the other side of that hole. How that point is pivoting inside of there and scrape, scraping a, a line or a circle on that other piece of material. And then the center of that circle is the center of the hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and show you what it looks like. Hold on. All right, see those circles? The dead center of those is where my hole locations need to go. And I'm gonna use a tap and die set. So taps and then the dies are for uh, making threads. Uh, these make threaded rod and these scribe threads into an already drilled hole. So we'll need to figure out what drill size to use for a five millimeter hole. They say you should be somewhere around a 165, 0.165 of an inch. And I don't have that exact size, but somewhere around there should be fine. So I'm gonna use a 166 instead of a 165. Then I'll use a M5, 0.8 millimeters per revolution. That's what the 0.8 stands for. At least I think it does. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, as my tap. So I'll drill the hole first and then come back through and run it down uh, with some hand tools here. So, off to the raises. All right, um, this kind of goes without saying, but this should, this, the drill process here should be done with a drill press, rather, hi Max, rather than a hand drill, if you can avoid it. I don't happen to have a drill press on hand, so hand drill it is. Oh, I didn't tell you how I figured out what the correct diameter of the hole drill is. So um, just ask Google for whatever size you're running. It'll tell you uh, what metric or um, imperial system sizes to use and what the conversion is between the two. So just Google it. All right, here's a trick that I know. It seems to work out well for me. Using transmission fluid for like a manual transmission on when you tap and drill holes. Uh, it's viscous enough to stay on there and do its job, which is to protect the, the bit from all, those, from all the metal being churned around in there. So pick it up pretty cheap and this bottle would last me a long time.
screws in and she doesn't rub with the minutest amount of clearance. She's in there. And I did it off camera, but I had to take this block off and actually ream the holes inside of it to get this to mount exactly where I wanted it. The tolerances are just too close to get those holes lined exactly right. So ran a couple drill bits down those holes and now she fits like a dream. All right. All right, it's all set to do the transfer punch on this side. I get the spacers from, as you guessed it, open those again. Just because they got some nifty awesome stuff. Anyway, um, just little spacers. These are meant to mount motors, whatever, whatnots. Run a little like, five millimeter bolt through there. And so all I do is just chop a couple of these down to about an inch. Put them in there as my spacers. So I got way more of these than I needed. I uh, got a little bit confused on their website. And instead of ordering like 10 of these, I ordered 10 packs of 10 of these. So I got these coming out everywhere. So if you need some, let me know. <laughs> I really love saws like this. You just can't buy these anymore. They are unique and to me a very valuable treasure. I got this one from my grandfather and I treasure it. Want to listen to something loud? This end finished looks like this with two more spacers bottom down there and the top up here but essentially that's it you can get away with this on this side just because there's no real lateral movement um, that this block is taking just up and down and these can handle that pretty easily so that's the plan at the end it'll look pretty goofy it has this little gap at the end uh, but that works. So now we've got a ball screw fitted to this aluminum extrusion and we're calling it an actuator. The last step here is the connection between the ball screw and the actual gantry plate itself. And I got something planned for that, so stay tuned. Okay Google, turn off the work lights please.